And so what does God do? The first thing he starts doing when he brings you in, denies. Well, there'll be no more of that, and we're not doing that any longer. And No, you're not getting that, and no, I'm not going to yield to that. And Oh, that's going to end, and you're going to let that go. And you, you, your first 10, 15 years with the guy is like, okay, so you don't like anything about me. Now, why did you save me again? Did I just sneak in? I mean, was I an afterthought? What happened? And so, but then you get past that 10th or 12th year if you yield, which most people don't make. And when you get past that 10th or 12th year, the reason you had to let that go becomes plain. It becomes clear. But also something else happens. God has reformed you. And because he's reformed you, he's changed your appetites. And you notice, because he changed your appetites, you are more content with life. The older you get, the more content you are. So he has to keep people childish. And keeping people childish is very easy. Just cause them to live in and by their wants. And cause them to be, live in utter resentment of their needs. Those two tactics guarantee that you will never grow up. So Paul found the secret. And what did he say? I have learned that in whatever state I am, therein be content. He found out that Satan's arch weapon against him was his chronic discontentment, chronic unhappiness. He said to, to Felix, I count myself happy. I think myself happy. He found the secret was to not allow his emotions to mirror Satan's failures. Does that help? So he, he rebuked impulsiveness. He rebuked rashness. He rebuked haste. He said, listen, if I have a $100 suit, I'm happy. If I have a $5 scarf, I'm happy. If I live in a $200,000 house, I'm thrilled. If I live in a three-room apartment, I'm happy. Why? Because my, my life, Jesus told me the secret, does not consist of the things that I possess. And he's happy. And when you're not allowing your discontentments to define your existence in Christ, to define your relationship with Jesus Christ, to define your approval or disapproval of his handling of you, then you have found the secret to eternal life and the secret to peace. And I'm telling you, you think this is just about church. It's, it's in the Bible. But everybody who's mastered life will tell you that. To defeat your enemy, you can't be defined by his weaponry. <laughs> I know where that's going. Your enemy will always defeat you when he can, is able to get you to buy into his weaponry. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. You are getting taken out because Satan caused you to see his weaponry as your affirmation, as your contentment. He made you content with his, the weapons of his warfare. You realize that the person who's content with being beaten is now defined by the abuser's mistreatment. And once you become defined by it, you accept it. And once you accept it, you embrace it. And once you embrace it, you pursue it. And once you pursue it, you have created a need, a craving for it. So people crave abuse because they are defined by the enemy that was stalking their life. So Paul said, I've learned. In whatever state I'm in, therein be content. You have to rebuke the formative things in your soul that tell you you're not content because. 
I'm not content because I don't have a car. I'm not content because I don't have a new car. I'm not content because I don't have money. I'm not content because I'm discontent because I don't have this. I'm discontent because I'm not so tall. I'm discontent. That is a weapon of war that you are being defined by. It's defining your soul. And then when you listen to me, when it can define your soul, it becomes your soul's stronghold. I want everybody to listen to it every day because you're not miserable because of what Christ said he would do and didn't do. You're miserable because of what Satan said you should want Christ to do and that what you should hold Jesus to. And so Satan is defining how you relate to your God. He's defining how you trust Christ. He says how you should trust Jesus Christ. And, you should, he, and he's defining it so that you will not succeed where he failed. Today? You want it today? Not tomorrow? Yes. Not tomorrow. Come on. It's important to you because the Bible said Jesus Christ makes you whole. So in order for you to be, remain broken, Jesus Christ is not in charge of your life. So you're defining your entire Christianity by what Satan says displeased him about Christ. And so, you can't be complete in Christ because Satan has decreed that no one will know how he fell. And he he refuses to let the church succeed where he fell. So you have got to play this again and again and again because it's going to wash your soul. It's going to wash your psyche. You're going to play it in your car. You're going to play it in your home. You're going to play it on your phone. You're going to play it on your iPad. You're going to play it on your computer. You're going to play it every day because this is your therapy to make a soul free. You will not define the goodness of God by the trashiness of Satan. Your impulses will not be the ones that caused him to rise up against his maker. I want you to think differently about your God. But I want you to understand that nobody in in creation had a problem with God but the angel of light. He originated the problems with God. So that's why you have generation curses. That's why you have generation spirits. And that's why you have familiar spirits. And that's how they changed you. That's how they formed you. Which is why you had to be born again. Because the spirit of your father was fused with the same spirit that seduced Adam in the garden. And the soul of your mother was fused with the same Eve that hung out with the serpent. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You cannot rule what has shaped and formed you until you break away from that mold. David said, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. You're, you're, you're trying to literally stuff Christ into Satan's mold. You want his rules in, in Christ's soul. And yet, you want Christ to rule according to Satan's mandate. And Jesus is like, are you kidding? I already got rid of that. I'm not doing that. If what I said may impact to you, you're going to have peace in your homes. You're going to have peace in your soul. You're going to have peace in your soul because you will never be able to act like a spoiled brat again and feel good about it. You'll never be able to tell your mother and father where to go and how to get there. And feel right. 
Because the wrath of man never produces the righteousness of God. You will never have any more stupid arguments. But here's something else you won't ever do again. You will never have a tantrum with God because he didn't do something your misformed and deformed soul wanted him to do. You're going to learn to be like Jesus Christ. And you cannot be like Christ, shaped by his enemy. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You're going to stop this. Your appetites, you're going to start challenging your appetites and challenging your passions and challenge your discontentment. Challenge your cravings. Because you need to find out what power is triggering them for what purpose. What power is triggering them for what purpose. And you're going to stop walking around acting like Jesus Christ failed you. And you're going to stop walking around acting like he has neglected you. And you're going to stop walking around acting like because he didn't give you what Satan needs for his children to serve him. You can't serve Jesus. In whatever state you're in, therein be content. You realize that you are angry with God because God will not raise you the way Satan raised his kids. He will not pander to your appetites. He will not pamper your childhood. And you're mad with Jesus because he won't act like Satan. Well, if you were a good God, you would. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't get saved for this. Well, I'm so and so years old. I should have this or that. I wonder where he first heard that line. I wonder where he first heard that one. Can you imagine? You are literally angry with God because God will not indulge your appetite. As they have been formed by his adversary. You were mad with God. Well, I should have a car and a house and a this and a that. God gave Satan all of that. It didn't happen. He gave Satan the power to make it all. It didn't happen. It still didn't mature. God gave him ages and ages of kids and it still didn't happen. He did not grow up one bit. He just became strengthened. In his inferiority. And comfortable with his failure. Because when you get comfortable with your failure, you no longer want to correct yourself. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus is a ruler. Think like a ruler. 